What's up? This is going to be a replay review of uh, Mario. He asked me to look at a Shaco game. So, let's get into it. Um, looking at matchups, it looks like Yasuo shoves mid. Looks like Sivir shoves bottom. Looks like Lissandra shoves top. So, your stronger side or the side that you have protection on from your lanes is typically going to be the top side. Um, which gives you a couple of angles or reasons to start red. One, if you start red, you can probably get these two camps, whereas if you start blue and then move into your red, uh, Nunu can red to red, and then Silver Karma will be over here, the first rotation, to attack your red. So Nunu could go that type of path, unless you're looking to go blue into red. But even if you go blue into red, you're going to run into situations where Nunu will go red into red, and then you have to concede your Raptor camp often enough. Um, one of the justifications for starting blue would be to realize um, either a full clear path because you think there's low gank potential based on how your lanes are set up. Um, although pathing towards mid seems okay because Yasu has ability. Uh, Lissandra at 3 seems to have ability to lethal often enough. Even Nami could. So I guess you could take this path. Um, I don't think this is the preferential path, because obviously blue into red doesn't really work. Unless you know exactly that he's not starting red, which you do this time, but you didn't know that when you were setting up. So unless you're on comms with your Lissandra, I think this blue start is very questionable. Um, you should have tanked one shot. Because if you tank the first shot, the first Gromp auto does more. Um, so in general, your box will die to two Gromp autos if it tanks the first auto. But it'll die to three if you tank the first one. So This is what I'm talking about. Like This is just really odd. Because even though your Yasuo can shove, if Sivir played a hard shove on the lane, um, then the wave could be over here. Which means that she has first movement. Plus, also, if he has red and you don't, and he did a red to red, then he has red and you don't have red, so you can't fight him anyway. And then their bot lane still has first priority pressure. So even if your Yasuo comes, their bot lane comes, and then it becomes a situation where more members of their team are coming than yours. Now, you can do that. Like It's not like your Ezreal Nami can't come. But if it's an elongated fight situation, then this wave is going to shove into the turret, and then they're going to lose CS here. Obviously, their team is also going to lose CS of these minions, but your team is going to lose more. The reason why your team is going to lose more is because uh, if their team roams, they're going to lose 7 CS, but your team is also going to take tower damage and then lose like 10 CS, the 3 here plus the 7 behind. It's just like suboptimal in terms of safety. Uh, you don't have lethal here, ever. He's full HP and still has flash, cleanse. There's like no point in doing this. You reveal your position, you might get like 10% HP, but if you value 10% of his HP to revealing position, I just think that's a bad play. Okay. So you know he has 12 CS, you know he went for a red blue camp or red camp blue into dragon. So now you have the secure. You're walking, which is fine. Shove, unless you, okay. So if you're uh, more, like, the reason for helping with shove, because obviously the lane neutralizes, your bot lane can base faster, and that's going to be more important than you getting Krugs, because you can also get gold and EXP here, also getting gold and EXP here. And then, also if you get any of the CS over here, you're also getting that gold on top of this gold, because you're not worried about, like, the state of the map in general, because you're new based, and then uh, the only way that they can kill top is if Lissandra doesn't ref uh, play around Flash Stun from Riven, which she can. So even if Nunu goes Krugs into top or Scud into top, which he probably will because even though these two lanes are shoving in, uh, Nunu knows that you're over here so he can take the top Scuttle. So you pretty much know where Nunu is already because he wants to get the Scuttle before he gets his camps because this is his only opportunity to get it before you base and then go to the top side. So you're pretty much in a situation where uh, shoving is good, plus you already have a really strong base. The difference between basing with like 2,000 gold to 1,500 gold is like... Uh, just tier 2 boots, um, 
but like your base is already really strong. So helping them shove and helping your bot lane base is really useful. Because you're putting like, well obviously they should have shoved another one, right? Because Sivir's like over here. Uh, yeah, if you check it. So, based on like map movement speed, they could have shoved another one base and then they could be back here by the time the wave shoving back to them, which is fine. But, there's no reason why you can't help them shove in the base as well to get tempo on the top side. Or to like, um, set up for the gromp that's coming back up at 4.15. You're, you're just like losing time here. Like, sure you can do this. But is this what you want to do? Like, at the second you don't help them shove, and the second you decide to go Krugs and then pry into this, you're pigeonholing the next minute of your time when you could have um, helped them shove, establish a situation where their bot isn't awkward and can get back to lane faster, which helps your bot lane, right? And obviously you can eat the CS too if you wanted to, if you're like a greedy player. Not, not even greedy if you think that you can carry harder than they can, right? And then you can base. You know he'll do this, but you'll put yourself in Gromp position. And then... That light counters the top situation as well, which stops the freeze if they decide to freeze out. If Nunu like just walks over here and freezes over here, then you have to stop this freeze, right? Because if Nunu walks over here and tanks this wave, and it's frozen over here and Lissandra has to TP back, well, it's an awkward 2v1 situation if you're still over here on the map when Lissandra has to like, try and stop the freeze. So you're sort of also funneling Lissandra into like basing and looking for like a mid player or looking for awards, but you still have to answer back this freeze if Nunu decides to do so. Right? Because you can't answer the freeze if you're not there. It's a lost cause. Alright, so you know he has 24 CS after basing. Obviously, you know he did this, this, uh, this camp, this, maybe this into base, into, uh, you know, left side scuttle. You already know his right. And here you're losing some time. Like, imagine if you were back on the map right now. Like, obviously going mid here didn't solve anything. They're both low HP. Yasuo is going to get out regardless of what you could do, even if you just slowed. Um, so this put... Like, had you base, they would have put you in a position to be camp camp top. Uh, bot lane obviously isn't low enough for lethal. Things like this. Or frame point. And your buy is the same. Okay, so you know where he is. So this is an easy top dive. A real easy top dive. Even if he has flash. Because it's Lissandra. So, yep. This is a really simple top dive because... If Riven doesn't respect and like run away to base, which she doesn't want to, and she doesn't have Hex or MR, then uh, Ults Q W E will like take her down to this, and you just need to Q auto attack to kill the Riven. If she does flash away, then the Lissandra can still E E flash Ults. So Riven basically has to leap to her, and because you knew you know Nunu's over here. It'll take him at least 30 seconds to get over here, same for support and same for Cyber Swap, which means that this is effectively either a kill and then like two waves lost for the Riven, or no kill and then you get top lane turret because Yasu is also shoving. He doesn't have vision here, so he's going to move to the left. You guys can 3v1 in 30 seconds and get the top turret first. It's a really, really easy top dive and or turret. So Riven's respecting now, and this is a turret. You can also go for further denial. Both are fine. Um, yeah, but had you not, like, walked in his jungle and... Like, you knew this was warded. Had you had Sweeper, uh, walked over here, activate your Sweeper hit this, you know, swept over the ward, walked over here, did the top dive. It was like effective 1k top gold. Go get your blue. It's fine, I guess. I mean, you guys were already out. 
Like, if you want to go for a turn, that's implying that the Nunu is also going to walk into you, which she sort of knows you're on the side. Also, you knew their bot lane was missing. I mean, I'm okay with the play if you're on. Why aren't you getting the mid? This is like 200, 250 gold and like a level. Why would you let this die? Like, getting to your red is not more important than this. Your red is going to give you red buff, obviously, but you can never kill Nunu in the first place. As well as, like... Red impact in other lanes is okay, but you already have a slow naturally. It's just more burn damage. And red EXP gold obviously isn't as much as the 250 gold over here. So questionable. Sure. Easy to translate. See the two of them, Nunu isn't back yet. Nope, skip the camp. Go over the wall. Dive, 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 dive. Oh my god. Could have dove 2v1 as well. Because you know Sivir Summons are down. She only has spell shield. Uh, you had like a 5 second window before Karma went. Especially if you skip the drop and help shove. Fine. You could go for mid lethal, you probably have the damage with Yasu. Got the flash out. Obviously you only have the kill potential if he doesn't flash. So when I say you could go for mid lethal, it's not necessarily that you should. He's playing it well. It's your call, though. Depending on how good you think the victor is, if you think you can exploit him or not. Should hover over here. Like, if you hover over here when you know that both of their summoners are down and you know 1-1 one, one is here, and you know you guys win, uh, like, all-in situation, like, you guys can lethal one of them, right? Because as we can shift in. So, you know that if you get on top of the Sivir and then Ezreal E Ws, uh, or saves W for shield, uh, you know that Karma can only top her off and then... It's a pretty easy kill here from 100, honestly. This is a kill. for the karma. Never mind. This is a pretty easy bot turret. Like a really easy bot turret. Why is Dragon more important than bot turret? So here's why you don't want to go for Dragon, right? You don't want to go for Dragon because of pressure mid. If Nunu shows up mid, then you can show up mid to dive. Alternatively, if Nunu shows up mid, you can also go for the bot dive, right? If you go bottom and Nunu shows up bottom, then you can go mid. So this is the time to pressure their bottom jungle, not to... Like, because you know Karma's at base, you know where Riven is. And, like, it's just a very easy time to go for turret. Alright, so you know Nunu's right, so go left. Go over here. Why would you lose tempo and go for your raptors when you can go over here, cut off the Nunu, and cutting off the Nunu guarantees the turret. Also, if you're over here, then maybe you get residual. Like, sure, you can say that they would have gotten it themselves, but if they get faster, then this event doesn't occur, like, or your team gets back to it. And it's not secure that they'll get it over here, depending on how uh, Victor wants to play it. Unless you know, like, the victor's bad. Go cover mid. Go cover mid. Why are you basing over here? Why? Why Why do you just want to lose 250 gold? Like, buying the dust blade is okay, but you can get the mid and then buy the dust blade. The tempo play, like, you, you already don't have vision on Herald. And you already don't have vision on Earth. So I guess if you wanted to keep tempo, then you would have stayed on the map and not based. In which case, you would have done this and then looked into stopping. Just a lot of 
poor base timings and macro movements. Okay, this is an okay time since you have mid tempo, you see one. Don't put a box on top of the pink cord. Does nothing. Red team has slain the dragon. Very aggressive considering it's hard to Try not to translate a turret off of them. Oh, early. Go shove bottom here. You can't recover the mid situation, you can only hope Lissandra uh, can clear. Go shove bottom, go shove bottom and pressure this turret to force them down. Like, by the time you base and get over here, it's gonna be 30 seconds, at which point the turret's already dead or the situation's already solved. Look, the situation's already resolved itself without you being available here, so why not have just pressured the turret, make them lose all the farm, chip turret, and or get turret if Riven doesn't go to defend. Look, you're, you're just going to the same location you could have been already. You could have done this and have based to... Well, eat this and then based to have a better base. The reason why it's a better base is because you had more gold, obviously. And obviously you're not accounting for getting that Sivir kill when you base, because that's dependent on Sivir, not on you. Unless you're making a read on Sivir. Obviously we're training topside, one minute on Baron, you wanna get topside position. Damage misjudgment. Shut down. Are you running celerity? So I just see that. I don't know if there's a way to see what runes you're running. Obviously you have Yomu's on cooldown. And then you have ult available. It's pretty simple. Okay. Shut down. Shut down. Shut down. Blue team's turret has been destroyed. This case, moving topside is more important unless you're looking to get a pick, which you can. You don't have Dark Harvest yet. I don't know why you're walking this way when you can just walk up. Oops. Good. Waiting special. Put a box on. Yes, your box is on full now. I'm not sure if you're using your Yomo's active or not using it. 
Just looks like you're not using it. I'd say that most of your mistakes come from lane phase not catching waves like this, going for red over waves like this, or going for red over prioritizing them pressure or like uh, tower take pressure, you're not identifying enough scenarios that you can push an edge. It's just like uh, pushing micro advantages like certain dives, uh, pushing micro advantages like collecting farm in certain areas. I don't like the way you're walking in to play this or going after. You can like wait for a better angle, you don't have to walk through the W and the Nunu ult. Additionally, you can't ever one-shot the victor anyway, because uh, the the three and a half item status you're at can't break through the Riley's health necessarily, especially since uh, you don't have Dark Harvest yet. Like I, I just don't like how that was played at all. Because I click on you and you have 128 stacks, so you don't have Dark Harvest, and you don't have a proc active. Uh, you could clip this, and you're walking through the victor field, so walking down in a way is better. You press tab, you realize that he has Riley's, and you have like three and a half items, so you can't actually one shot the victor, especially if he lands a Q on you, which you will. It's just like really, really questionable to go for this. Yeah, you know, like you're better off just going for the Sivir because you can one shot her, and then you're queuing in when you can queue away. Like queuing up is okay. Queuing up is way better than queuing in. One, because you already can't kill the victor, so there's no point. Queuing away is fine, too. Still aggressive. Obviously, you know that you're going to be seen because you show in the silhouette. Obviously, none of this you can affect except for shot calling, so. Like, at this point in time, you're. Never killing Riven. I mean, you could kill Riven, but she has like. You probably want to wait till four items or five items to one shot the Riven. So if you want to go for Riven, you can. You have to outplay her, which you don't if she plays well. Obviously, you're never killing the Nunu. You can kill the Victor once you hit four items, maybe four and a half. You can one shot the Sivir. Can't kill the karma. I mean, you can't kill the karma. You just need like four items. Probably last whisper. It's a face check here. All right, so you know Riven's bottom without TP, and you know that your team doesn't have TP either. That means Riven has a shove, and she's gonna walk up here. You have a top, so top shove. And obviously, if Riven can't be here and Victor's over here, then Sivir's going to be the one to answer top unless it's Nunu. It's going to be really, really slow. So you have a pretty simple cut. Should hover the cut. Obviously, right now you're on a timer. Because of bot lane. Never mind, I don't think Riven, Riven didn't adjust the way properly. Never mind. So Sivir's top, so you know she's going to go for the cut, and or you can go for the engage, engage because the Sandra will be here before Sivir, and obviously the area carry isn't here, so you can go for a mid player or you can go for a top side cut. Either one. Q on cooldown, Sivir's walking back. Got the sweep. Bot side is shoving. Why would you pick the support to go on? Like, if you can't get... We already established, you can't kill the... You can't kill this target or this target, and you definitely can't kill the Riven now that she's Ninja Tabby, so you can only kill the Sivir, so there's no point on going on anyone except Sivir. If you can't get the Sivir, you ult and you get out. Just, uh... Poor damage control. You have four items now. Which means... You can... Almost kill the victor. And you can certainly kill the seven.
They have TP. You can go for a TP force. Um, if you guys had a tank in your composition, this would be the time where you would force and then back off to force the Riven TP to get the edge. Because obviously, uh, you know, you want to adjust the map, right? Riven's bottom, you want to adjust this wave, you want to adjust this wave, you obviously want to adjust this wave. So this is one of those time periods where you can either default and go for the uh, more standard play, which is wave adjustment, which is really, really hard considering your Lissandra user TP. Um, so to balance out that TP usage, you want to start here, tank, pull the Riven TP, and then back off. Right. Now you look for residual damage or picks. No. no. Victor play that properly, you're dead. Right. And here are those waves that we're talking about. So, so with the answered situation, here's the time to adjust the waves. Plays okay too, since it's an effective two v one. Obviously, wave adjustment is important here. And basing for last whisper is really crucial, so that you can one shot the karma. You go for stopwatch. Stopwatch. I don't buy into it. In general, might make a minor difference. Okay. It's pretty easy. Just turn, turn first. Even though you guys don't have tanks. Okay. So obviously you guys are on Baron. And then Yasuo has the right idea to go for the turn first because you can't let Riven get this flank position over here. So you guys should peel off quicker. So you guys are peeling off. They obviously see you since uh, the new new old channel. So he knows you're here. So there's no point in aggressing because he'll just back off, right? So your, your job is to either go for auto attack and residual new new damage or uh, box and then E and all that. Obviously this, you have no place going for this kill. Had you gone for Nunu, you would have been up again with a second Q going for this. Identifying whether or not you're seen is really important because whether or not you're seen, I don't know if you had Yomu's there, but whether or not you're seen is like the most crucial thing because you'll never be able to kill him in that spot then. You have GA now, but I'd much have preferred Last Whisper. You can't kill him. Okay, let me tell you why you can't kill him. All right, he has 300 health, right? 300 health means you need four items to one-shot him, but he's Victor. And if you click on Victor and you know Victor's ability, his Q is also going to give him uh, additional shield, right? Absorbs up to 142 plus 100. So this is another 250. So you need five items to kill him. Now you have five items to kill him now, but you also have to keep in mind that Karma's next to him, right? So if Karma's next to him and can shield, he need, you need six items to kill him. And... Like, you don't have the right six items to kill him. Like, GA is just gonna do less damage than Last Whisper. You don't have the Ravenous completed. If you run the numbers, you can't one shot him. Definitely not next to Karma, because you know the Karma pre mitigation plus the Karma uh, E shield is gonna be way too much for you to handle. Karma E shield right now is giving another 200 HP. Just way too much for you to deal with. Sack the top turret. This is okay. You, you know her special. Why are you going for the Victor when you know you? 
You can't one shot the victor. You also can't one shot the Sivir. Even though she used spell shield, you can't one shot her because you can't break ninja tab because you didn't build last whisper. Like your champion does nothing if you're gonna play this fashion. Like you're not gonna be doing what you need to do. Now if you like are building in a way to let your team carry, that's fine. But like that's like saying you're not better than your teammates, in which case you're at the ELO you're supposed to be at. That is... Just base. Why do you care about the raptor camp? Just base for mana. Like, why does this raptor camp matter? At this point, like... Zerkers are just worse than Mobis. You're never getting more than a second auto attack anyway. At this point, Mobis are just the better boots to get. If you're not getting a damage item. Okay, you see the field. Not the Karma. Don't go after the support when the AD carry is right there. Could have queued closer, you could have went this angle. That's game. Alright. Yeah, so overall, uh, macro wise, your early game macro, you're not getting enough turrets, you're not doing enough dives. You need to identify lethal by keeping track of summer spells and keeping track of what your team can do and what their team can do. Um, you need to be picking up stacks, you need to be uh, damage judging to see who you can and can't kill. And then. Um, you need to be catching waves. Catching waves is just more important than getting a jungle farm, often enough. But, like, in general, you should catch waves when it's profitable for you, and you should identify that. Anyway, that's that. Hope that helped a little bit.